we are getting into more home recording options, particularly with silent recording today. And we are doing so with the Cook Dummy Box. Now, what this is, uh, is a attenuator slash load box slash uh, cabin, you know, speaker cabinet emulator. And, uh, you know, we're going to go through all of that stuff here uh, as I'm getting it out of the box. Now, the reason why this thing caught my attention is because, you know, I mean, ideally, you know, everybody would have a torpedo, you know, a, a, a two notes torpedo live, which is a load box and a cab emulator and all that kind of stuff, you know, but they're, you know, fairly, they're expensive for a lot of people. They run about $900 or so, uh, and they seem to tend to hold their value pretty well on the used market, you know, because you're still going to pay about 600 or so, uh, six or seven anyway, for a used one. Now, this guy... Hey, it even comes with its own speaker cable. That's cool. This guy, on the other hand, is, uh, you know, while it certainly is not as robust as the Torpedo Live, uh, this one is certainly much more affordable. Uh, Cook, and I think it's pronounced Cook, K-O-C-H, I, I believe the guitar player Greg Koch <laughs> spells his last name the same way, uh, pronounces it, as I just mentioned, Koch. Uh, I have, you know, so I'm not real sure how they pronounce it, but uh, they are an amplifier company, and uh, because I am an American from Texas, I am going with Cook amplifiers. However, these guys, uh, this, these little guys here are actually very, very affordable. You can buy one of these brand new for $165, uh, and that is all the big, all the size that it is. And these are designed to be able to play your tube amplifier without a speaker cabinet. So, you know, there's the box, there's the dummy box, they call it, and the instruction manual, which I'm a guy, so we don't really care about that. And what we're going to do is we are going to plug it into the back side of my good old trusty Panama Shaman head uh, that... Actually, I have not used in quite some time. So this thing had a blown up tube in it for a while and uh, kind of didn't really do much, you know, because I didn't really get in a big hurry to get it fixed. And finally, I discovered that it was a much easier fix than I initially thought it was going to be. So I took care of it and you're also going to get to see me test out to see this amplifier works otherwise I'm going to be running back and grabbing something else but we are going to run this thing without a speaker cabinet of any kind and then run it straight into the DAW and hear how it sounds and just because we can we are going to go ahead and use the Cook Amplifiers provided speaker cable that I'm noticing actually also has uh, gold connect gold ends on the connection. So it looks like and it actually feels pretty heavy gauge. It actually feels like pretty pretty good quality cable. It's not a little cheap thing that that they threw in there just for the heck of it. Speaker. Rue. Okay, guitar amp speaker output, 8 watts, or 8 ohms rather. Up to 60 watts this thing will handle. Ohm output on the back of Mr. Panama Shaman. Mr. Panama Shaman also needs some power. Okay, now, major, major disclaimer, this is not a joke. 
I am getting ready to use my tube amplifier without a speaker cabinet. Do not, under any circumstances, ever use your tube amplifier without a speaker cabinet unless you have something like the cook dummy load that can handle the load otherwise and again this is not a joke this is dead serious if you do not know this you will blow up your tube amplifier so there you have it be safe when you're doing this kind of thing with the speaker emulation on it. Uh, in fact, I'm not impressed at all. So, let's try something a little different here. Let's see what happens when we put a cab emulator here in the signal path, shall we? Let's replace the speaker emulation that is in said Cook dummy box home unit. with, let's try it here with the Moor Radar.
Okay, so there you have it for the Cook Amplifiers Dummy Box. Uh, you know, the as I mentioned earlier, I am not overly impressed with the speaker emulation on it. Um, and just for kicks, let's try that one more time. Right now, this is with the speaker emulation off. I am still running it into the Moore radar. <laughs> Of course, you know, that way doesn't sound too bad. Turning it on. Now I actually hear a little bit of a difference. So, you know, maybe. Maybe it's not quite uh, as subtle as I thought. But, you know, it's, it's in this instance, it doesn't really make sense to run speaker emulation into speaker emulation. So. Uh, you know, running it by itself, like I said, I was not overly impressed. Uh, but beyond that, that's really the only negative thing that I had to say about it. Uh, I intentionally did this demo with the Moore Radar because, you know, I wanted to hear how it would be going into uh, a couple reasons. I wanted to hear what it would be like going into a separate speaker uh, cabinet impulse response device of some kind. In this case, it, again, it's the Moore Radar. And uh, you know, and also the main reason that I that I wanted to do with this particular setup, as I mentioned at towards the beginning of the video, you know, you have uh, devices out there nowadays that are doing this kind of thing, such as the uh, the torpedo, uh, the two notes torpedo live, uh, which is probably about nine hundred dollars just by itself. Uh, of course, there is the Sur, uh, you know, the Sur IR. Uh, load box attenuator. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'll uh, look it up and post it there on the screen. I want to say those are you know around the uh, $600 range, you know. And then you have uh, you know even you know higher end devices nowadays such as the Universal Audio Oxbox uh, and the you know most recently the Boss Waza tube amp expander. And both of those devices actually have fantastic, fantastic speaker emulation and uh, impulse responses uh, inside those things among several several other features and uh, those two devices are both pretty expensive they're gonna run you thirteen fourteen hundred dollars or so uh, depending on you know they're uh, they're pretty they're pretty expensive so that said this setup here you know the cook dummy box cost one hundred sixty five dollars the Moore radar costs one hundred fifty eight dollars so for a little over the $300 range, you can accomplish, you know, for all intents and purposes, pretty much the same thing. And uh, I'll also post a link to uh, the recent demo that I did of the Moore Radar so that you can check out what this thing is all about. But the two combined will put you right around the $300 range uh, for both uh, load box, attenuation, and cab cabinet IR, uh, which combined is a perfect setup for home recording and silent recording uh, which is primarily what I intend to use these for you know because this amplifier here is, is 20 watts and is plenty loud and there are plenty times that I am not able to use it because it's just uh, you know it's just too loud and I certainly can't crank it up to the levels that I have it set here uh, to get the tubes cooking real good <clears throat> Uh, this thing is rated for amplifiers up to 60 watts, so you're not probably going to run you're not going to run 100 watt Marshall head into it. However, if you have an amplifier such as a PV6505 plus uh, a 112 combo, which is a 60 watt amp, uh, a uh, Marshall DSL40 combo, which is also a, another fantastic amplifier that's 40 watts, uh, serves a lot of purposes. You know, stuff like that. This will absolutely be able uh, will handle the load of. You know, provided you're going into it with an 8 ohm load, that is, uh, will, this will absolutely be able to handle the load of those amplifiers so that you can use it for purposes like I am demonstrating here. You know, I find these to be very affordable and very cost effective uh, home recording solutions, which, you know, in my environment and where, you know, I'm constantly going back and forth between rooms now, doing various different things uh, and trying not to disturb the other members of my household. Uh, 
I'm constantly looking for this kind of thing, and this is a very, very good solution. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, I will, as always, post links to all of the gear that I used in this video down in the description so that you can check them out, as well as a link to the video that I did recently on the Moore Radar. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to this channel if you have not already. We'd love to welcome you to the family. Uh, speaking of the family, we have family time on this channel every Saturday morning or afternoon, depending on what time zone you're in, at 12.15 p.m. Eastern Time right here on this channel. Most of it takes place right here from this desk. And we talk about guitars, we talk about guitar gear, and we talk about YouTube and whatever else may be on the docket that we feel like talking about. Uh, and uh, it's a great opportunity for me to get to interact with you guys directly, and uh, I have a lot of fun doing it. I'd love for you to come join us. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.